All right, kids. Uh, fresh set of videos coming at you here. Fresh set of uh, problems, starting with 16. So uh, let's just dive right in, shall we? What we want to do is use the first derivative test to determine where the uh, extreme values are for this particular problem. I think the function, the directions say first derivative test to determine local extrema and identify absolutes. So we've got this really interesting function x times e to the 5x. So let's take a derivative. Now, I don't know about you, I love taking derivative of e to the x. It's so easy. Um, but remember that we've got product rule going on here too, so that's that's the other thing to keep in mind. We slip it in when you least expect it. So the first times the derivative of the second, well, the derivative of e to the 5x is e to the 5x times the derivative of that exponent, which happens to be 5, and then plus the derivative of the first, which is 1, I'm not going to write it down, times the second, e to the 5x. So here we go, okay? Not a hard problem at all. Now, when we're trying to find these extreme values, we set this equal to 0. What does that mean? That means we want to know where this function, the derivative equals 0, that will tell us if we have a max, a possible max or min. And this, this equation is a little on the wacky side. Check it out. I'm going to actually factor out e to the 5x here. Let me see if I can grab the right blue back. Uh, so what I'm going to, that's not the right blue, hold on. So what I'm going to end up with is y prime is equal to e to the 5x times 5x plus 1. And I'm actually going to set that part equal to 0. Why? Because I can use that 0 value theorem, the one that says if this first guy's equal to 0 or this guy's equal to 0, that one of those has to be 0 because they're multiplying together and they make a 0 and 0 times anything is 0. That rule. Okay? Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take e to the 5x, set it equal to 0. I'm going to take 5x plus 1, set it equal to 0. Well, Remember what e to the x looks like. Do you remember? Let's have a quick review. e to the x looks something like, and this isn't exact, but yes, looks like that. Uh, guess what? Never crosses the x axis, not one time. So this doesn't happen, all right? What I am going to do, though, is I'm going to take that uh, 5x plus 1, and I'm going to solve it. So 5x equals negative 1, x equals negative 1. Fifth. All right, now, the question though says, determine the local extrema. Okay, so in the past, I've gone ahead and said, you know what, find your own y value, but I'll go ahead and do it for you this time. Uh, you know, that way you can never say I didn't do something for you. So what I want to do is look at the function at negative one-fifth, and that's going to be negative one-fifth times e to the five times negative one-fifth. Okay, and simplify this all down. That's going to be negative one fifth e to the negative one. Okay, no problem. I'm going to just take one more step here. Negative one over five e. Guess what? That's my y value. So, at what point on this graph right here do I have an extreme value? At the point negative one fifth, negative one over five. And if you want to punch 5e into your calculator and get a decimal, be my guest. Um, it certainly is not something that you would have to do. In fact, a lot of tests um, would, and answers and professors would prefer to see the e in there because it's a more accurate answer instead of an approximation through decimal. So either way is fine with me. Uh, I won't be too picky, but always be sure and check with your teacher and get their preferred way that you should answer a problem like this. All right, real quick, and I forgot about this, but let's go ahead and sign chart this guy so that we can determine if we've got a max or a min. Now, what two things am I going to use? I'm going to use um, the negative one-fifth. That's the only one that I got a zero for. And the thing with a fraction is um, there isn't a thing with fractions, so don't let it the fact that it's going to be negative one-fifth bother you, okay? I am going to use e to the 5x as one of my factors over here, and I'm going to use 5x plus 1 as the other factor, because those two things multiplied together make the derivative. So, with that said, when I pick a number less than negative 1 fifth, like say negative 1, and I plug it in here, I get a positive value and a negative value. When I pick a number that's larger than negative 1 fifth, like say 0, 
when I plug it in, I still get a positive value and I get a positive value. So what do we know about our graph here? Well, I'm negative and then positive. In other words, I decrease and then increase. And guess what that makes this guy right here? A minimum value. Okay, 17 now. We're into concavity. Okay, so what that means is second derivative. Anytime you hear um, point of inflection or concavity, second derivative. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and just find derivative of y, and that's going to be 3x squared minus 6x minus 7. We're going to find second derivative of y. And then we're going to set this guy equal to 0, just like we did with um, the other problems, okay, when we were trying to find those local extreme values, we're going to do the same thing here. It's the same exact process, except we're working with second derivative. So if my second derivative is positive, I'm concave up, which concave up, let's just have a real quick review. If I'm concave up, I have a graph that looks like this. If I'm concave down, I have a graph that looks like that. Okay, that's how concavity works. So I'm going to take 6x equals 6. I'm going to let x equal 1. So that's the place I'm going to set my test at. And I make my number line. I put a 1 right here, and I check 6x minus 6. It's really, this one is really not a complicated one. And usually by the time you get to concavity, they're not too bad. Usually. Now sometimes they can be a little tricky, but we're going to see with 0 and 2 that this is what happens. And so what does that mean? That means that from negative infinity to 1, I'm concave down. From 1 to positive infinity, I'm concave up. So read the question. Find the intervals where the graph of the function is concave up. And we would use interval notation. We would say from 1 to infinity. And that's it. That's all you have to do to find concavity. All right, so now we dealt with concavity. Let's talk about points of inflection. And a point of inflection is where concavity changes from up to down or down to up. And it's just like finding a zero uh, of a regular fun of a derivative, like determining where you have a max or min, except now we're going to do the exact same thing, second derivative. So um, here's what we're going to do. We're going to find y prime which is 2x cubed minus 9x squared. We're going to find the second derivative, which is 6x squared minus 18x. Okay, let me just double check, make sure I'm good. I am. And what we're going to do is we're going to set this equal to 0. Okay, we're going to make a sign chart. It's going to be a little bit more involved than what we just have been working with. So let's factor out 6x. And when I do that, I have x minus 3. And these are the two things that I set equal to 0. So I get x equals 0 and 3. Let's make a sign chart. We're going to use 0 and 3. I find it's a good idea to put the numbers in numerical order. Um, some people don't pay attention to that. I think it's asking for trouble personally. Uh, but that's just me. So. Then what we're going to do is we're going to run over here and we're going to have 6x and we're going to have x minus 3 because these two things multiplied together give us our second derivative. Now, go through your sign chart. Pick a number less than 0, you get negative. Pick a number between 0 and 1, you get positive and positive. Same thing for x minus 3. Pick a number less than 0, you get negative. Pick a number between 0 and 3, like say 2, you still get negative. And then a number bigger than 3 is positive. So I end up with a positive a negative and a positive. Now, I've got concavity. How do I know? Because I'm concave up here. I'm concave down here. And I'm concave up here. That's my concavity. I know that for a fact because we're working with second derivative. What I've discovered is that this point right here is a point of inflection and so is this guy. They're both points of inflection. Why? Because concavity changes from up to down and from down to up at those specific points. So I have a point of concavity or a point of inflection I have a point of inflection at x equals 0 
and x equals 3. Now, um, one of the things that you can do with this is you can go ahead and determine, hey, what values of y are those points of inflection located? And I'll let you do the work on this one. Back to Mr. Badman. But what you're going to do is you're going to take the function at 0, which is going to be 1 half times 0 squared minus, I'm sorry, not squared, 1 half x 0 to the 4th minus 3 times 0 cubed plus 12. And you're going to work with the equation f of 3. And you should, you're going to have negative 1, not negative 1 half, just 1 half. 3 to the 4th minus 3 times 3 cubed plus 12. So if you want to know your matching y values, work both of those guys out. All right, another connection problem. Can we tie together the function and its derivative and how they behave? So we've been given a graph of f. We haven't been told what this function is. We just have been given the graph. So we want to know um, where the derivative is 0, where it's positive, and where it's negative. So think about this for just a second. We get a, we get a 0 at a peak or valley. So that's the first thing to recognize. So we're going to get a 0 for the derivative at these two points. So when x is 1, I think is what it looks like. Let me see if that's what I wrote down. Um, yep, negative 1 and 1. Okay, and that's this guy right here. So you get zeros at those places. We get a positive function where the graph is increasing, we get positive values for our derivative. So where do we increase? We increase from negative infinity all the way to 1, and we're going to list x values here, negative infinity to 1. And we also increase from, that should be negative 1, we also increase from 1 to infinity. Okay, And then where is our derivative negative? Our derivative is negative at the place where our, our original function is decreasing and it decreases from negative 1 to 1. Now, um, you cannot put a bracket around infinity and I probably won't shoot you if you put your brackets around the 1's and negative 1's. Uh, there is some debate as to whether or not those points are included. I'm good either way, but this is a, uh, an opportunity to check with your teacher and just make sure are you noting the interval notation correctly uh, for them. So make sure and have that discussion and don't just necessarily take my word on this one. This is good for me, brackets are good for me, but always double check. Alright, here's another problem similar to the last one that we worked out. We've got this function of f and we want to find out where the second derivative now is zero positive or negative. Remember second derivative deals with concavity. So um, I need to find a point of inflection, I need to find um, concavity and all that kind of stuff. Again though, we don't know what the function is. We haven't been given like the function. So let's just talk about zero. A zero occurs when the concavity of your graph changes from up to down. Now without having a, a function, I'm just going to guess that it looks like it's right here on the x-axis when x is equal to zero. Now why would I say that? I'm eyeballing it, okay? Uh, why am I eyeballing? I don't have a function, but it appears that we stop becoming concave down and we start becoming concave up. Well, that takes us to the next st uh, step on our journey here. Where are we positive? Well, we're positive where we're concave up. So from zero to infinity. By definition, the second derivative is concave up if we're positive. By definition, we're concave down if we're negative. So where are we negative? We're negative from negative infinity to zero. And again, if you want to put brackets around the zeros, I'm fine with that. Um, always double check with your teacher and make sure that you're using the notation they prefer. Um, so anyway, that's how you use a, a graph of an original function to find uh, where the second derivative is zero, positive, or negative.